as the sum of each generation before it, the next generation Corvette stands alone. As the new standard of precision and performance, of engineering and technology, of everything that makes an icon an icon, and a Corvette a Corvette. There is over 20 years of development between the C5 Corvette and of course the brand new C8 Corvette. And I'm not talking about the pop-up headlights. So in this video, we're gonna see how much the Corvette has improved by of course drag racing them, finding out how quickly they stop and seeing which of these two cars gets better performance. It's that one, but by how much? There are a few different ways to get under the hood of the C8 Corvette, but my favorite is this hidden button underneath the headlight. Um, but of course, yeah, well, under the hood, there's not an engine because this is a C8 Corvette. So let's go around the back. Around the back of this Corvette, you have, well, actually, surprisingly enough, a trunk. And there is also an engine back here, just up there. It's a 6.2 liter V8 with 495 horsepower. Under the hood of the fifth generation Corvette is also a Chevy V8. It's a little bit smaller, 5.7 liters. It puts out a little bit less horsepower, 345, but it's in the front where it's been well for the last seven generations. And unlike that car, this is actually paired to, uh, don't pass out here, a four-speed automatic. All right, case. Okay. so in case people don't know, C5 means the fifth generation, which I'm in, and C8 means the eighth generation, which you're in. Yeah, and to my surprise, I mean, you're the boss. You could have picked the C8 if you wanted to, but you let me get in the C8, which is pretty generous because I am confident in the results. Well, you know, you are a Corvette owner, so you had never driven one, and I had, so I thought it would be only fair for you to give it a shot. So in terms of strategy, I don't have any fancy schmancy launch control, but I do have a performance mode and I have turned my air conditioner off, so, you know, beware. Yeah, I have all kinds of different settings. I have Z mode, I can also go into sport mode on top of that, and then if I press the traction control switch twice, then it goes into ESC competitive mode, and that's where I can actually get my launch control. Well, I have, uh, I have a lumbar control, so I just push that out. Well, we'll see if that helps you keep up with me a little bit, but I kind of feel like I am just gonna see you on the horizon behind me. All right, let's do this. I'm dying in here, it's hot. This is not gonna be a race at all. down this drag strip I have done, period. Oh, I gotta open a window, it's so hot. Oh. Oh my case, that was uh, not even close. I did 113 miles per hour traps, trap speed, 12.8 seconds, and that's at a mile above sea level and not on a prep surface. So I went uh, 100, uh, I actually went 99 at 15.55. Yeah, so there's a big difference there in the amount of time. And, and again, I mean, this is very real world. We're not on a prep drag strip or anything. This car is still shockingly fast. Yeah, I think putting the uh, engine behind the driver and on top of the rear wheels really helps for traction. That plus all that crazy horsepower and this dual clutch. I mean, there's so much going on in this car to make it fast. Rocket. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. 
I, I would have thought that this car would be kind of a handful to do that with because it's 495 horsepower, but it's easy. This is a really easy car to drive fast. I'm actually very impressed with this Corvette. Uh, I know that, uh, you know, it's from the 90s, uh, but still the amount of technology that Corvette slathered upon this car is very impressive. Obviously they're both aluminum, uh, but uh, they're both, I think, still underrated as just sheer performance and drag racers. It's uh, it's quite astounding and just how good this feels and sounds at, you know, 100 plus miles an hour. All right, 99. Almost 100. What do you say we do a little bit of an exhaust battle? I mean, they're Corvettes. We kind of have to do a rev battle. Yeah, now to be fair, mine has an aftermarket exhaust. Yeah, but I also have the optional performance exhaust. Do you know that gives you five more horsepower? Yeah, so 495. I don't know how much more mine gives me. Yeah, maybe none. <laughs> All right, I'll go first. Not only does this C8 Corvette sound better, but with the press of a button, I can also fold the roof back. All right, so yes, this can also go topless. It's also a Targa. It's just a little bit more work. You know, it's more manual. Oh, I forgot this guy. Okay, a lot more manual. There we go. Look at that. And it's not that heavy, as you know, both of these are made of fiberglass, so eh. You get your workout, but you also get that cool Targa experience. It's just a little bit more, let's call it analog versus electric. All right, Casey, ready for the roll race? Let's do it. I, uh, yeah, I've got even more confidence in this one. Well, I do too, because you don't have any launch control now. <laughs> yeah, something tells me I won't need it. Here we go, 30 miles an hour, and then we floor it. trying to pull one over on me but yeah even that didn't work I mean this car this car is shockingly fast but what's also surprising is how calm and refined it makes that amount of power and acceleration feel well this one's red <laughs> I'll tell you what they're both a lot of fun I think that's common across every generation of Corvette all right uh, you want to do the uh, brake test now yeah let's do it I uh I know that some older Corvettes still have pretty badass brakes on them, and uh, we'll see what the difference is in stopping. All right, okay, so pretty straightforward. We uh... accelerate to 60. We hit the brakes when we hit the cones, and uh, let's see which one of us stops quicker. How about that? That sounds good to me. I mean, this is a pretty modern car, so I would figure it's gonna stop in the shortest distance of these two by a good margin. Well, you know, they say the torch red car stopped quicker, so... Oh, they're both torch red. All right, let's go, here we go. That C5 stops pretty pretty well, well enough uh, in this car though to even move my camera and well enough 
to beat the C5. All right, let's see the damage. That's a long walk, Roman. Need water? That is not so long, Case. Look at those numbers. 112. Wow, that is impressive for a car from, you know, the 90s. I'm surprised you didn't roll off the end of the runway. Oh, come on, dude. <laughs> Anything under 120 feet is really good. It's all right. All right, well, let's see how uh, yours did. Under 95 feet. Look at that. Wow. All right, yeah. uh, call me impressed, dude. Uh, so, how much was mine? 112. So, 100 versus. 112 versus 95, so that's 17 feet of sh stopping distance in 20 some years. Yeah, which is pretty good because, again, I mean, older Corvettes, I will admit, actually stop impressively well. When we've compared those to other modern cars, they tend to do even better than a lot of what's coming out today. And this is significantly better than that. All right, before we get to the most important number, and I am talking about price, yeah. let's talk about the specs of these. So uh, tell me about that one. Well, this is pretty much a standard C8 Corvette. So it's not a Z51, it's a 2LT, and it's got the performance exhaust, but it's otherwise normal, which is a very good comparison to your Corvette. Yeah, performance exhaust, pretty much a standard torch red Corvette. Now, in terms of acceleration, obviously two and a half seconds quicker in the quarter mile. Yeah. And stopping about 20 feet shorter. Pretty yeah. impressive. Yeah, that's actually really impressive because, I mean, when you say two and a half seconds, until you actually see that going down the strip, two and a half seconds is a big difference. Yeah, it's an eternity. But the big number, <laughs> we paid $14,000 for that. What does the Monroni say that one cost? Yeah, I've actually got the window sticker here and it was 82,115. So, you know, I mean, a brand new performance car, you're gonna pay money to get all that performance, but the difference between these two is shocking. Yeah, I could probably get a C5, a C6, and maybe a ratty C7. <laughs> and that is the sticker. It's not above sticker what people are paying. Well, there you have it, guys. A classic Corvette versus a new Corvette. As always, this is Roman. And Case. Saying check out alltfl.com if you want to see all of our coverage. And we'll see you guys next time. Ciao.